So how are the error function, the Q function, and Gaussian tails related? And here's the equation for a Gaussian tail, for a general Gaussian that has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So this is the Gaussian probability density function, and here we're integrating from A to infinity, and this will give us the probability that our outcome will be bigger than a value A. And so, for example, this comes up in digital communications or hypothesis testing or data classification. Um, and let's draw out this. I always like to draw a picture. And so here we have a Gaussian that has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. And so this is what the Gaussian looks like. It's the symmetric function. And this is y because we're plotting uh, for values of y. Uh, and this is the mean mu. Okay, and so this is integrating from a value a up to infinity. So it's adding up this area under the probability density curve. So this is what this function is, and this is a Gaussian tail. And like I say, it comes up in uh, lots of scenarios. So for example, uh, if you had people's, uh, let's say, annual salaries, which are generally sort of Gaussian distributed, then you might be saying, what's the probability, if you pick a person at random, that their salary is bigger than the value A, for example. So also, we have a standard formula, standard function, called the error function. And this function is uh, directly found in programming languages such as C and Python and MATLAB and so on. So this is a standard function. And you can see that it looks similar. The equation for it is similar to the Gaussian. And so, you know, how do these two things relate? Okay, so let's look at this pic this one here. So this one, if I plot this one out here, then this is also, you can notice, it is also a Gaussian. It's a Gaussian, I'll just write Gaussian, with mean equals zero and the standard deviation equals one divided by the square root of two. And so in that case, you get a picture uh, which has a Gaussian like this, which has this particular variance or the particular standard deviation of 1 divided by the square root of 2, value t here. And we're adding up between 0 and z. So this is 0 to a value z. And so the, the integral here is between 0 and z. So it's adding up this area here. But because we're multiplying by 2, we've got two lots of that area. And because this is a symmetric function, we know that it's the same as, or the total you'll get is the total area here between minus z and z. So this first hashed region, uh, I'll just draw this one here. Uh, this is, or maybe I'll draw a, a line around to here. That's this region here that you're adding up between zero and z. That's this, the integral, but the full function is the full area uh, over here. So maybe I'll draw it the whole way around, uh, sorry, the, under the whole thing, and that is the full area over between minus z and z. Okay, so how do these two things relate to each other? Clearly this is between two values and this is the uh, bigger than. Sometimes you need the error function. You'd like to know if someone's, uh, let's say again, if we say they're their yearly salary, you might want to know, is the yearly salary within a certain range of the mean? Then you're just directly going to use the error function. Okay, so let's, uh, let's also introduce this other function and then we'll see how they all relate to each other. So this is the Q function, it's another standard function. Uh, and this function looks very similar to the error function, uh, but it has two differences. Instead of a two on the top, it's a one minus, uh, sorry, it's a one divided by the square root of two. Uh, and instead of being between zero and z, it's from x to infinity. So this one is again a function more like this function over here. It's the tail of a Gaussian. Again, you can see the Gaussian, but in this case, it's a Gaussian with a standard deviation of one. So this, this one here was the Gaussian mean naught and, this, uh, and, and one on square root of two. This one is a Gaussian with a mean of zero again, but a standard deviation equals one. So again, if you go to the top equation and you put sigma equals one and mean equals mu equals zero, then you get this expression here uh, exactly. And this is then between x and infinity rather than a to infinity, but that's the only difference. So obviously Q is going to be very closely related to the real one we're interested in, where there is a mean that's not equal to zero and a variance that's more general and just equal to either one or one on square root of two. So let's see how they all relate to each other. 
So the first thing I want to do is to relate the Q function to the error function. So to do this, we do a simple change of variables. Let u equal the square root of 2 times t. We'll do that change of variables. Then the x here, so u, when u equals x, so when u equals x implies t equals uh, x divided by the square root of 2. Okay, and when infinity goes to infinity, so infinity implies infinity, so that's the upper limit, the lower limit we've just worked out, and we've got du dt equals the square root of 2. So, so now we can do that change of variables here, and we can see that the q function equals, so this function here, equals uh, what, 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi, uh, with the integral, and we're replacing this x now with, with t equals x divided by the square root of 2. Okay, and then the upper limit is still infinity. Uh, and then we have here, now we're replacing the u uh, by uh, this here where u, we're replacing it with the square root of 2 times t. So we've got e to the minus t squared. Uh, and then the square root of 2 is squared and cancels the 2 on the bottom. And then you've got du, which equals the square root of 2 times dt. So we've got the square root of 2 times dt. And this square root of 2 here cancels with this square root of 2. And so clearly we can see that well, we've got something that looks very similar to the error function, except that uh, it's just the same form inside the integral, except that the uh, limits are different. Instead of the error function being from 0 to z, uh, we've got now from x divided by square root of 2 to infinity. Uh, and so let's think about how these two things relate. So we've got exactly the same curve here, except now we're looking at a value, instead of value z, we're looking at x divided by square root of 2, and we're looking at this tail probability here. So how do we relate the two? Well, we know that the total area under this curve equals 1. So the area in these two tails, if we add up the two tails, then the area is going to be 1 minus the area that's inside between these two limits. Okay, so this is 1 minus uh, the area inside these two limits, which is the error function. So the error function evaluated at x divided by the square root of 2, because that's the limits we're interested in now when we're looking at our q function. It's this limit here, or this, this uh, value from there to infinity. And then we divide that by 2 uh, because we only want one tail. It's only from this to infinity. We're not asking for the value from minus this to negative infinity. It's only from that to infinity. It's one-sided tail. Okay, so now we've got the x function in relation to the error function. So we've, ha we've related those two functions. So now how do we go about the more general one and link them all, link them both to this more general tail for a general Gaussian? Well, again, we just do another change of variables. So let's let u equal y minus mu divided by sigma. And so if we take this equation here and make this transformation here, we're going to find that how that relates between this and the q function. Okay, so let's do that. So when u equals this, so the lower limit here is a. So when y equals a, it implies u equals a minus mu divided by sigma. And when y equals infinity, also uh, u equals infinity. So y equals infinity implies u also equals infinity. And we've got du, sorry, du dy du dy is equal to um, uh, du dy, which equals 1 divided by sigma. Okay, so now we can write down this expression here. So we'll put the line around to here. So this equals the integral. So we're replacing y uh, with, with the, uh, we're going to replace it with the u. We're going to, so we're going to be integrating over u instead of integrating over y. Okay, so now we've got the limit here of a minus mu divided by sigma to infinity. Uh, and this is e, and now we've got this function here. We can see here that y minus mu divided by sigma all squared is y minus u. So this just leaves us with u squared. So now we've got minus u squared divided by 2. The 2 remains. And the dy equals sigma times du. Okay, uh, and so, oops, I forgot to have the 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma. Okay, so now this sigma 
that we've come from our derivative term cancels with the sigma that is there. Let's look at this in relation to this over here. So we have the 1 divided by 2 pi square rooted. Uh, we've got the integral from a value to infinity. This is the value to infinity. And we've got e to the minus u squared on 2, e to the minus u squared on 2 du. So it's all exactly the same except that's the value. So this equals the q function evaluated at a minus mu divided by sigma. And we know, of course, from over here that we can relate this also to the error function, which is a half of 1 minus the error function uh, evaluated at a minus mu divided by the square root of 2 times sigma. So now we've got an equation that takes the tail of a general Gaussian with a mean mu and a variant sigma. We can represent that in terms of the q function by a simple change of variables, and we can represent that in terms of the error function, which we can calculate in standard programming languages such as C, Python, and MATLAB. So hopefully this has helped you to understand the relationship between these different functions. Uh, if you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the web link in the description below the video where there's a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel, including PDF summary sheets. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.